This is Mitchell Zoller from Global Medical News Network. I'm at the annual Congress of the European Society of Cardiology in Barcelona. I'm speaking to Professor Gilles Montalescov, who's a professor of cardiology at the Hôpital Petit Salpetria in Paris. And he is presenting at this meeting a report from the GRACE Registry of Patients with Acute Coronary Syndrome. Uh, data collected from about 250 hospitals worldwide that looked at the outcome of uh, about 1,800 patients who had unprotective left main coronary disease uh, and um, had unstable acute coronary syndrome, including patients uh, with shock and resuscitated cardiac arrest, and looking at the um, outcome of these very sick patients um, who uh, got treated with um, various means uh, of revascularization or no revascularization. Uh, so Dr. Uh, Montalisco, uh, could you tell us uh, briefly what you found from this analysis? Yes, what we found from this larger database is, is that clearly unprotected left main coronary disease in patients presenting with an acute coronary syndrome it's not a frequent situation, but it's not uh, uh, also a rare situation. It occurs in 4 to 5 percent of patients. And it's a situation where we have no randomized study, no recommendation for the decisions that we have to take in terms of treatment and management. Uh, so uh, what, what, what we have seen is that whatever we do, uh, we are dealing with very sick patients, high mortality rates, 7.7 percent of deaths uh, during the hospital phase, 14 percent at six months. Uh, the death rate is 34 percent in patients uh, presenting in shock. So really a, a difficult cohort of patients to, to treat and, and no guidelines. Yes. Um, what we have seen is that uh, along the, the past eight years, uh, we have seen more and more PCIs done to, to these patients. Uh, in, in year 2000, cabbage by, was by far the predominant mode of revascularization. And since 2005, PCI has become the most common strategy of revascularization of these patients with uh, unprotected left main and an acute coronary syndrome. And uh, the sickest patients go really to PCI, the, the patients with ongoing ST elevation MRI, the shock patients, the patients with the cardiac arrest, uh, while the patients that go to the OR for cabbage surgery have a lower risk and are scheduled in general a few days later when they have been stabilized. And uh, it's a different type of population. And, and I think it's good news for us, which is that we have really now two uh, strong options to treat the patients, PCI and cabbage. While uh, eight years ago, it was mostly cabbage. And uh, uh, the interventional uh, cardiologists were very reluctant to treat these patients in the cat lab. Yes. So these data really confirm that PCI is a viable option for these patients. Yes, I, I, it makes sense also to, to use PCI in, in these very unstable patients, uh, sometimes on mechanical ventilation with, with shock, with ongoing STEMI. Uh, you wouldn't like to, to get a, a, a general anesthesia and an open chest in these patients uh, in emergency. Uh, so so uh, now that we know how to deal technically with unprotected left main disease, uh, we apply these techniques to uh, the most acute patients and, 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 and the data are good. There is an improvement in survival at six months with both types of revascularization, PCI and cabbage. Yes. And finally, you made the point that the registry data are probably the best that are going to exist for some guidance in this situation that the, in terms of randomized trials that probably no, will the, never the, the happen. The best data because the only data, uh, there is no randomized study and, and there will not be any randomized study uh, in this uh, situation because it's too difficult to do. This is Mitchell Zoller from Global Medical News Network.